Paul in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians would begin to dive into a little bit of his discussion on the end times and really some of the different things that we need to be prepared for as believers. We're going to dive into that today. It can get a little complicated, but it's okay. I think that we're ready for it. We're prepared for it. We're going to talk about what God has shared with us in the word for things that are to come. Verse 1, as for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God as in fact you're living. We told you to follow after God, to live God's word, and he says you're doing it, and I'm thankful. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more, for you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's will that you should be sanctified or or set apart. We should live set apart, that we should avoid sexual immorality, that each of us should learn to control our own body in a way that is holy and honorable, that we shouldn't live full of lust, but that we should live with self control, not in passionate lust like the pagans or people who don't believe in God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. There should be no taking advantage of brothers or sisters in the church. There should be, we should not be given over to lust. We should not be given over to immorality or to adultery. That's not, that doesn't line up with God's word. That's a worldly feeling. That's a fleshly desire, and we need to put that feeling or that fleshly desire to death in our body. We don't need to go. It says the Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. God says there's consequences for our actions, both good consequences for our good actions and negative consequences for our sinful actions. Verse seven, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about your love for one another. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia, throughout Greece. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do more and more and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, a peaceable life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anyone. He said, don't be, don't be boastful. Don't be trying to puff yourself up, but to be humble in the way that you live, to live quiet and submitted lives to one another, to serve one another, that people would see that the way that we live and that they would see that there's something different about us, the way that we love each other, the way that we love them, the compassion that we carry. And out of that, it will draw people to Christ. Such a beautiful picture how we're to do things God's way and to set aside those fleshly desires that can be so destructive for us. Verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed or or ignorant. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. So there's five times in the scripture that Paul says, be not ignorant. And then I believe um, the apostle Peter says it one time. And he says, beloved, be not ignorant of these things. And there's different things that are highlighted in the scripture. I'm probably going to take this video and make this a series inside the app, but it's so cool how these things are highlighted for us. And one of them is talking about the end times when he says those that are asleep, that they about those who sleep in death, that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. The world has no hope when people die, but we have a hope because we know that when we die, we're with Christ. And we know that we are anticipating and awaiting Christ's return. He said, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. When Christ returns, when Christ comes back. We know that those who have died, whose hearts are for Christ, will come and we will be with them and we will be together. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is speaking of of a, of a rapture, if you will, or of the end times when Christ will return. And he says, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another 
with these words. He said, there's going to come a time when Christ is going to return and he's going to return for those that um, are still alive on the earth. He's going to return for his bride, the church. But at the same time, there are those who have already died and we will all be together and we will meet Jesus in the clouds and everything will be made right in Christ, with Christ, through Christ. And he says, this should encourage you. This shouldn't scare you. This should encourage you. I love how he ends the chapter in verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is a time of encouragement. We're gonna dive into the rapture and different things when we get into the book of Revelation a little more. And in chapter five of 1 Thessalonians, um, there's many different perspectives and opinions and discernment of the scripture. You may have heard this phrase, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Um, there's going to be a time of tribulation and Christ will return. Some people believe that we'll be raptured before it. Some people believe we'll be raptured in the middle of it. Some people believe we'll be raptured after the tribulation. Um, honestly, at the end of the day, I'm not particularly too concerned about it because I know that Jesus Christ is all and is all in all. And I'm a believer and you're a believer and we will be preserved, whether that's through times of tribulation, whether whether we die before Christ returns or whether we live to see it. Um, I know you're probably thinking, Stephen, what's, what's your opinion? What's your perspective? I'll tell you just for fun. But if you disagree, it's fine. I personally believe in the pre-trib mindset. I believe that Christ is gonna call the believers up to heaven before the times of tribulation takes place. That's just my opinion. I believe part of when he says, encourage one another with these words, I believe that that's an encouraging mindset or prospect. Going through seven years of tribulation does not encourage me. So I am of the opinion that it is pre-trib and in other videos, I'll share with you throughout the gospel why I believe that based off of different things in the scripture. But again, I wanna share this so clearly. If you feel differently, whatever. It's really not a big deal. I know this, every word in this Bible is true. My interpretation or your interpretation might be misunderstood, but I know that if God said it, it's true. And I may not understand everything he said in the way that he said it, but I believe it. And I believe that every word of God will come to pass because God's word is true and alive. Be blessed today.